Williamson is ten times the world champion. Fax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Lucan certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable. Welcome to round two of the World Sidecar Motocross Championship. This is what happened in round one, Talavera de la Reina in Spain. We find ourselves now in a beautiful part of Portugal, Torres Novas, the capital of the regional province, a lovely, lovely town. Motocross track is only just outside. A lot of history here, lovely people. The welcome we've had could not have been better. Just a beautiful part of Portugal, about one and a half hours north of Lisbon, the capital. Want to talk about food? There is only one country to be, and that is Portugal. This air of calm tranquility about to be shattered, but the people welcome it. It's a very, very big event. Justin Kerbin and Dion Reitman had the most fantastic opening round in Spain. Surprising me, certainly. Maybe not them, but I'm here with Justin. Dion's on his way, he'll be here shortly, but Justin, what a fantastic way to open the season. You're now joint fourth on 30 points with two other teams. Yeah, uh, <laughs> if you tell me that before the season, I'm, I'm happy with P to, to start the season with P4, so uh, yeah, I'm also so, so a bit surprised. I've said in commentary, and I'll say it again, you finished last season very strongly, and you seem to have carried that form over. Have you had a, a hard week, uh, winter testing? How have you kept no, so we had, we had a, uh, yeah, of course, fitness, uh, we, 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 did, we did our work, but uh, on the bike we had a, a bit of a bad off season. There were some private reasons. Uh, we could not train on the hard pack, so we only did like three practices on Saturday in the sand. Uh, one small uh, practice race, and then the, the, the first GP came, so the, the preparation was not, not, not that good. So I'm yeah, really surprised that the P4 is now the standings. There haven't been sidecars here in Portugal on this track since 1992. Have you walked it? Have you taken a look? First, yeah. first impressions? Crazy. It's a track we, we we've have not yet uh, had before. Uh, hills, a bit of sand, hard pack, strange jumps, ball turns finally. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I like jumping. This is a track with a lot of jumps, so I think it suits me pretty good. Quite a few stones. <laughs> few? <laughs> <laughs> Only stones. <laughs> Only stones. Only stones. <laughs> Maybe after a few wheels have turned, they'll be gone. Yeah, that's the same in Plomion. The track is normally only rocks, but after a few laps, all the rocks are gone and then the, the track is hard, hard. So let's hope. It's also the same here. Well, keep it going. Not only, not least of all, because you're easy to pick out. I know instantly it's, <laughs> the colour scheme is good. That's good, that's good, that's good. <laughs> Jason Van Dala and Costas Beletskas were another team who astonished everyone in Spain. Started the season really, really strongly. And you told me you hadn't had much training over the winter, you haven't been riding much last year. Your fitness was amazing. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad with the result already, but uh, it was not the best winter uh, preparation we have, could have done. But I'm still waiting for, because it's a long season, to, to get more fitness in the next month than, than I was aiming for this two rounds now. So I'm glad by the result and I hope to progress a little bit more for the next uh, round. You made your name with us with a backflip last year in particular, but now that's behind you, you're focused purely on all 14 rounds. Yeah, this year is uh, the main goal, uh, the World Championship. Uh, so, focus fully on the sidecar racing. Are you happy with joint fourth overall in the points after round one? Yeah, for sure, I'm, I'm really happy. I was maybe aiming top 10 and I was already 
having a good weekend, so the result was really good. Not the best starts, but the riding was good and we made progress the whole weekend uh, long, so it's only the second race we ride together, so uh, that's, that's really good. Well, you, you preempted my question, because I was about to say how many rides have you had with Costas, but yeah. you've just answered. Say, just uh, one French championship and just some practice rounds. So yeah, but he's a good guy, he knows what he's, he's doing. He's a really good guy, he knows what he's doing, he's helping the team a lot, so it's a real, a real good feeling together. Uh, Brilliant. Have. Yes. have you looked at the track? Yeah. What about it? A lot of jumping, but uh, I really like jumps, so that's uh, that's no problem in on my opinion. So don't forget what you're doing and go backwards. No, 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 no. Let's stay in the front. <laughs> Let's stay uh, focused to the riding in the front. So Tim Pruma, the German rider, and Janu Stegmans, his Belgian passenger, did a great job in the opening round in Spain, particularly his starts, which he really tells me now is his signature. You must be delighted joint fourth after the opening round Tim. Yeah, yes, it's uh, really good for us. Didn't expect that. Uh, we didn't expect anything. We tried to go uh, as good as we can. And uh, as I say before, we uh, had a lot of bad luck last year. So now we try to go round and round and round and collect points as much as possible. Yeah. And you tell me that you're going to do as much of a German championship, full series as you can, yeah. and this entire world championship. Yeah. That is a busy year. That is really a busy year, yeah. And not only for us, the whole team is coming with us. Mechanic, parents, friends who helped us, and uh, also for the sponsors. It's also very expensive, and uh, now we have the support, we can go, and we try to make everything possible, yeah. How did you get into sidecar motocross? Did you follow the family route? Is it in your genes? No, no. In my family, it's not. So I think uh, it's in family in sidecar cross is most familiar. But uh, for me, not. I saw sidecars riding and uh, rode solo dirt bikes before. And then I go to my mechanic and say, "Hey, I know you ride a sidecar, so I want to ride one too." And uh, it was very funny for me, and I liked it. Yeah. It is a very different, it's a niche sport, but it's yeah. very different and we're all one family, yeah. I get the feeling. Yeah, yeah. and I like uh, the work on the bikes. The bikes are, uh, every bike is special, everybody builds their bikes after their own feeling, what they need. And if you are a good mechanic, you can go a bit faster and better. That's yeah. what I like. It's uh, in solo bikes, nobody work on the bike. You've done your own development and we've talked about the fuel tank that's in the sidecar and you've had some conversation with the FIM yeah. and I understand that quite possibly this might be the last time you're allowed to use it. Yeah, I hope we can go on with it. So for me, it's uh, the fuel tank is safe there. It's in the sidecar and uh, the weight is over the full bike. It's better for me than on top. It's down in the sidecar. So I hope we can go on with the fuel tank, but uh, we will see in the future, yeah. If not, you just accept the decision and carry on, yes? Yeah, for sure. We uh, have no other chance. I will buy, build a new fuel tank if we need, and then uh, we try to go on as fast as possible. Well, you're a breath of fresh air in the championship. The colors are fantastic because I could yeah. pick them up straight away. <laughs> and that's really easy. Yeah, just keep getting the starts. Yeah, orange and blue is... Uh, my hometown color. I wear it my whole career long, and uh, I will wear I will wear it until I end the sidecar cross. I'm here on the track with Justin Kerbin, who's been getting some really good starts. Certainly last week in Spain, he was phenomenal. He was also quick in free practice this morning. Justin, we're looking here off the start and up the straight. Okay. You go left up there, but when you come round, look at that ahead of us, those jumps. What about that look? Yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. The, the jump is, is perfect size, so you came around the corner, flat out, and then keep it wide. It just, when I saw this track, I thought this, this is too much solo, it's gonna be difficult, but seems to me the jumps really work. Yeah, all the jumps are perfect. There's only one jump is, I think, too big, but for the rest, a lot of tables, doubles, uh, but it's perfect for the sidecar. And surprisingly, they watered it for several days before even you guys turned up, but they didn't really need to because we've had a bit of rain today and it, it's already quite, quite yeah. muddy underneath, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's getting slippery. It's getting slippery. The top layer is, is, is going off and underneath it's pretty hot. 
So yeah, when it's wet, then it's, yeah, it's, it's, it will be slippery in the, in the quality race. So. One other thing that struck me is the amount of stones. And they're quite big, aren't they? I mean, yeah. at, some of them are buried here, but they are big stones. Have you had any problem with stones flying back? No, not yet. Um, in, 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 in practice, you, you, go, you go just for, fun, for, for one lap and you're not behind someone. So yeah, the important thing is to, 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 to get a whole shot, eh? Yeah, you seem to be quite good at that. So I'm sure you'll do your best here, but are you looking forward to the two races? Yeah, yes. Um, I hope that, uh, the, that there are a lot of passing opportunities. And if not, then yeah, then we need to get the whole shot. You do. Just look at that though. Coming round after the opening lap, that's what faces you. Does it does it worry you or do you just hit it? No, I just flat out. In free practice, I think uh, the second or third lap we could jump it already. So yeah, it, it's big, but it's easy. It's pretty impressive. It's a good track. It's perfect. Good. One of the best I've ever ridden before. So well, have a good I'm weekend. Happy. Thank you. Group A then, two groups of riders go for the 24 immediate automatic places. Down goes the gate, Van Luken to get some flyer. Pruma got a look at Dan Foden in the blue. Number 10, he and Ryan Humphrey going through in the mix. That's Stefan Veers and Lert van der Putten in the orange and white. Dan Foden, red bike, blue shirts, number 10. Tim Pruma, Janos Stegmans in the orange and blue. There goes Foden through the picture. There goes Viers. And Lil Bardis says Tim Pruma. Etienne Bax, Etienne Bax in the red shirt with the telly forks. He and Andre Chermak, not the best of starts. But that massive, massive crash last week must have locked their confidence when the front end of the bike became completely detached. But Etienne Bax. Pressing on, there. Out in front though, Marvin Van Luken and Nicolun would say, what a cracking start they had. 101, Leal Bardis now, and there's Gert Van Verven, number 11. There's Gordiev, Gordiev, 151, Gert Gordiev. And Ava Van Der Veel this year. Lots of passenger changes over the course of the season. This track here in El Dal, which is the Crossa de Roma Jose Enrique Carvalho, 1600 meter track, built in 1980. Last sidecar round was here in 92. So it's 31 years since the sidecar world championship was here. Sven Visseling, Jens Vincent, number 19. Back to the red plate holder, the race leader, Marvin Van Nukena, Nicola Mousset in their qualifying group. This will put them on pole position. Dan Foden, Ryan Humphrey, Stefan Veers, Leal Bardis, Tim Pruma, Etienne Bax. Still unable to do anything about those crews. This is not the Etienne Bax we know, that is for sure. This time a season ago, he'd have gobbled those three up in a lap and a half, possibly. But now he's poised. Reigning champion, Etienne Bax, in the red shirt, poised to make a move. Already past Dan Foden. Dan Foden looking like he's got some sort of problem here. Slipping backwards, there's Kuhn Hermans. Kuhn Hermans, Ben van der Bogart, number three, making their way up through the field as well. But Van Lukener coming here with a 50 point maximum on an absolute mission. Etienne Bax with those white power teleforks. Well, that's reminiscent of 40 years ago when everyone went lightweight using basically stock chassis. The young ladies, Sophie de Box and Clementine Tamri, 131, all female crew, the first ever in World Championship Sidecar Motocross. Hand in the air from Marvin. He knows he's home and dry. And there it is. Van Lukener Supreme, Etienne Bax made it up to second place. Gunnermans Prima Lielbardis. Further down the order. 
Jano, you and Tim had a really strong ride, a good start. You were battling well and then slowed down a bit. Yeah, um, we had a very good start again because, of course, it's Tim signature's move. And um, we were happy about the riding, just had some bad luck trying to pass everywhere. Just on too many places on the lap and then backs came by and other guys came by. We lost some places doing that and then at the end of the race we had opposition and we could we did not see someone in front of us so we said it's okay like this and we just keep on going like this. He's a fast rider and, and you're a good passenger. You, you're a good team, you ride well together. Are you excited about this season? I'm very excited about this season because last year we had a lot of bad luck with some big injuries and um, he made a lot of progress this winter. Um, we have a different chassis also this year, we're riding with VSP. Um, we're very happy that we are here and we're hoping to do every round. So uh, we will only progress, I think, and that's good for us. What's your realistic uh, achievement, do you think, in the races? Certainly certainly top 10 material. Any, any harder than that? Of course, we're hoping every round to be in the top 10. I think for speed it's okay, it's just um, we have to see with the, our condition how that will be, but I think we well, the more races we do, the better we will get. But um, I think there are some tracks where we will be able to do top five. That's at least our goal this year, to get some top fives in, and then we will see. Etienne, I could see your confidence growing lap by lap. You're on a good way now. Yeah, I had some... Uh, it was not easy uh, before the race. I felt not really comfortable, but uh, luckily we could... Uh, uh, yeah, we could ride a nice race and we could build on our confidence. So we felt that it was going better lap by lap. So I'm happy and uh, with this progress we can go on tomorrow. It's a pretty amazing track, isn't it? Is it difficult to ride? It's a great track. It's always difficult when it's new, you know. And this morning everybody was not struggling, but you know, you need to find your own way in, in this track. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a great track. It's, it's a great atmosphere here and uh, we love to be in Portugal. Are there many overtaking opportunities? Is it wide enough on the jumps? Yeah, it's wide enough. It's, it's, uh, you can overtake where, wherever you want, actually. And uh, there are some, some lines, so uh, yeah, the speed, the speed is high. That makes it maybe a little bit more difficult, but uh, there are possibilities to overtake, yeah. It's really good to see you back on the pace. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>
and Joe Millard tipping it on its side. That inside rut has really dug out, and that's a result of the right-handed chairs driving out of the bend and causing a deep rut, which caught Brett out. 7-2-3, Jason Van Dahler and Stegman's passing Stacey and Alex van der Velt. So lapping at the range, still coming down here. But qualifying Group B race on its way. Marco Heinzer, 93, left-hand chair for the Swiss. Traditionally, the Swiss have their sidecars on the left. He and Rudy Betchart, such a fun team. They enjoy traveling, but it's a tight budget they run on. Sanders Rostang. Davy Sanders did quite a few of the French championship rounds last year because his French passenger likes to race at home. And why wouldn't he? And I suspect some of their sponsorship might even come with Luke Rostang from France. Jason Van Dahler then on his way to second place here. But race leaders, Kerben and Reitman, said their colors are easy to pick out and they are gray and red distinctive from the back. Checkered flag being readied for these. They've got the left-hander to negotiate. And there it is done. Kerben van Dala Sanders. Heinz of Prunier leffering Wilkinson made it up to seventh, so not too bad. Gregory Maymore, George Kinch in the top ten. Davey, you had to fight for that one. You were closing, coming through and through and through, and I thought you might just get Marco Heinzer. Yeah, we got a mid-start and uh, we are riding on the 6th, 7th place, first lap. And um, we catch every uh, lap some teams and we are uh, close to Van Dalen, he finished two and yeah, third position was, uh, was good uh, on the end of the race. Van Dalen surprised everybody with his speed, hasn't he? Do you agree? Yeah, he rode always uh, good in the, the past and uh, yeah, he's always a good starter. And uh, yeah, he's always a good, a good team. You've done quite a lot in France, haven't you? Uh, last season and again this year? Yeah, we ride, I ride with a French uh, passenger and yeah, we ride also uh, some French uh, races and it's a good uh, race for preparation um, the GPs. How about this track? You obviously like it. Yeah, it's a super track, super location also and it's a good track for the season. The rain's coming down, we're going to get wet. Well done. Yeah, thank you. See you tomorrow. Marco Heinzer, always smiling. Yes. Another good start, uh, third at the start, and then went backwards a little bit. Yes, uh, the, the start was, was, was good, but uh, the, in the race we, yeah, we have a little problem for, the, for this season. We, we go always a little bit slower. Is it to do with physical fitness, you know, sort of muscle work? No, no, no. I think it's, it's the, the uh, uh, not so many races. I think it's it's coming on the season uh, come better. So. so as we get more into the season, you're going to maintain the pace. I think yes. It's 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 coming too easier, and, and then it's beyond the end of the season. I think it's it's very good for us. Well, it's good to see you up there. Well done. Thank you. Welcome to Portugal for round two of this stunning championship. This is the most beautiful, beautiful country. The people are so friendly. The scenery is just so special. The food, what more can I say? Just look at these stunning pictures from Torres Novas. Alcadio is where the track is, and we are not that far from Fatima, the religious center of Portugal, where thousands of people make an annual pilgrimage. Just outside the small village of Alkirdao lies the motocross track where the riders are being presented to the crowd, headed up by FIM senior delegate Antonio Alia Portela. 
This is the point where everyone gets to meet the riders, the riders get to meet the people, the photographers get their chance. The young French ladies here, first ever. I know I repeat myself, but what an amazing start they've had to the year. Beautiful weather, what more could we want? And we've got a British crew lying second in the title, but Marvin van Lukener is on a maximum of 50 points coming here to Portugal. Here Nicolas Musset, the Lille twins, hoping for a better result than they had in Spain. Smiles abounded. Defending champions, Bax and Chermak. And our start line hostesses, Katerina and Marta. After dominating qualifying, Marvin van Luken and Nicola Mousset are just less than an hour away from the first race here in Portugal. A fantastic track and you were superb in qualifying, if I may say so. Yeah, the qualifying was, uh, yeah, it was pretty good and uh, we take the also then can, can take the win. But today are the points and uh, today is important, so uh, hopefully another good start and then do just a race and we will see. I think the speed is there, so uh, yeah, let's see what uh, the Drey will bring uh, for us. Where do you think your main threat will come from? Who's the biggest problem, potentially? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, it's still uh, Box and uh, Hermans, the, the biggest concurrence, I think so. But on this track, uh, yeah, there is a lot, uh, a lot possible, you know, when you are uh, taking a jump not complete, you can lose a lot of time, so uh, you need to be the whole race uh, a big focus and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we can fight for the win. Nicola seems very happy, he's relaxed and you're going very well together. Yeah, for sure, uh, like I said already before, when Nicola uh, riding is really good, really good, uh, the speed is there and uh, yeah, uh, it feels like it's all easy, so uh, let's hope today also. How was the birthday party last night? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My son is uh, two yesterday, and uh, yeah, we did a, a small party yesterday evening. Uh, today I have not so much time, so uh, I hope I can uh, give him the big present on the end of the day with the win. So, so do uh, we. We're looking forward. Good luck with that. Thank you. Jason Van Dahl and Costas Paletskas have had a brilliant start to the 2023 season. I'm here with Costas. Are you surprised the way you clicked and your on it straight away yeah like really i don't know yeah we had unexpected like yeah we did not the best preparation this winter but like as you see yeah the team is really strong and yeah we are also was surprised that we can reach already like from first uh, race such a good result so yeah it's really like uh, motivating to go further and just yeah like the main thing uh, stay without the injuries and just like yeah send it <laughs> you're a hungry passenger you want results you like to ride with a fast driver i think you found one now yeah yeah i think yeah now finally i found it which is like really like yeah we also clicked really so good in like from the first training so like for me it's like we can say it's like going to like yeah really dream come true to ride like with really fast uh, riders so yeah and you can only improve. More time on the bike, more time together. It can only get better. Exactly, exactly. And uh, that's our goal. Just like each weekend, like uh, try to build up more and more uh, confidence, speed, and just yeah, keep on going. A quick word on the track. Spectacular, but difficult. Uh, yeah, I think for passengers especially, it's difficult because it's always like yeah, there is not so much place to rest. So just like yeah, it's always like you need to work. So but. Yeah, that's why we were training in the winter. All we, in winter was training, so we are prepared for that. Thanks, Costas. Good luck. Thank you. Well, what a track it is. And here's how they line up. Van Luekner, Justin Kerbin headed Group B qualifying. Bax is in there, Van Dala, Hermans. They're the men that Van Luekner said he feared most. Sanders, Tim Brummer, what a start to the season he's had. Marco Heinz are always there. Lille Bardis boys, Gert Van Verven. Well, he came here in a strong position. Third in the championship needs to do something better than 11th fastest. Wilkinson, Millard, what can they do? And the rest of these guys, well, Stuart Brown sadly will not go. He is injured. His foot just could not stand the pace. So a real, real upset for the British crew. They're returning home to regroup. 
Van Lukener then, red plate proudly displayed. As you would expect, we know what that means. He needs the championship, can do no better than 50 points. Wilkinson second on 42. Justin Kerben is there in fourth on 30 points, level with this man, defending champion Etienne Bax. One minute to go before the start of race one here in al -Kirdal. Right then, Van Luken is right over on this side, the blue shirt with the white helmet. So let's see what he can do. Straight into the lead, into that first left-hander. A little bit of a punt. Oh, there's a big mix up there. Who was caught up in that? Was that Wilkinson struggling? No. Away they go. That looked like Justin Kerbin. Justin Kerbin was in there, I am sure. So the Dutch crew, Kerbin and Dion Reitman, looking like they're going to have to work in this opening race. Jason Van Dala. Uh, Kostas Beletskas ahead of Marco Heinzer and Rudy Betchart chasing Etienne Bax in the green shirt. They got a good start. Bax got a good start this time, but he's got Jason Van Dala, his nemesis from Spain, breathing down his neck. Van Dala now looks like he's got his hands full. That looks like Killian Prunier and Rodolphe Le Breton, the number 94 crew behind. And then a long, long gap before the rest of the runners come through. Kuhn Hermans is already charged by and is on the case. He and Ben van der Bogart are right on the back wheel of Van Dala Beletskus. And the Belgian and Lithuanian pair now coming under some real pressure from Kuhn Hermans yet to get his first championship but having a good look here at Alkia Dow. Hermans, the man doing the fastest laps at the moment outside of Van Lukener, who is in a class of his own, I have to say, this weekend. Astonishing performance. There goes Hermans on the inside. Through he goes. That's another step up the ladder for Kuhn Hermans. No, it's not. Fighting back, that was brilliant by Van Dala. And don't forget, both left-hand sidecars, so he got the drive down better than Kuhn Hermans. Now the red plate at the front, Van Lukener and Mousset. Using the berm to full extent. And what a start they had, straight out in front. Here comes Bax, here comes Bax. Teddy Forks, clear there for you to see as he came over the jump. The 82 rider with his Czech passenger gaining in confidence again after that massive crash. Uh, you would be, wouldn't you? If your front end comes off, goodness me. How horrendous could that have been? Thank God it wasn't over one of the quickest jumps. I'm beginning to think that Kuhn Hermans might have been one of those who got delayed at the start because he's having to play catch-up, but he and Ben van der Bogart are doing a great job making their way through. Now, almost on the back wheel of Van Lukener and Bax. Bax going strongly, but uh, I think Hermans might just hunt him down, you know. Beautiful, cloudless sky here in Elkia Dal, Portugal. What a great... They're George Kinch. George Kinch and Paul Horton, number 24, relegated by Hermans and Van der Bogart as they make their charge through. The blue flag there being waved on the left of the track. And we all know what that means. Move over, gentlemen. The quick guys are coming. Well, George Kinch has acquitted himself really well this year. Oh, who's that out of it? That's Hasker Herkmans and Robbie Bax. Robbie Bax, former world champion, riding with Hasker Herkmans because he said, riding for a bit of pleasure this year. The 856 crew out of it. Jason Van Dala still charging in a strong place. He's in the top five. Hermans has made his way through. Here comes Brett Wilkinson. Look at the picture, the top of the picture, in the blue. Brett Wilkinson and Joe Millard making their way through now after, well, they must have been caught up in that first start on the first lap as well. That first, it looked like it might have gone into the fence even. Race leaders Van Lukener now coming round behind the number 15 crew. That Jan Polivka, Miroslav Zatlukel, the all-Czech Team. And uh, Stefan Vier's there as well. And over the line goes Van Lukener heading for the checkered flag. Brilliant, brilliant stuff for him. That's it. Job done in race one. Another 25 points and a maximum for the Belgian. What more can we say about his start to the 2023 season? Amazing. Nothing short of amazing.
That's it then, Van Luke and her Hermans, Bax, top three. Good ride by Bax. Wilkinson got up to fourth place, preserving his second place in the standings. Vandala, Kerben, Heinzer, Foden, Dan Foden in the top ten. Well done. Sanders, Killian Brunier, and Rodolphe Le Breton, not Evon. Evon is injured, two broken bones. We believe in this, and uh, for this race, we take the whole shot. And uh, like yesterday, we make a gap uh, after three or four laps. So we have to gap uh, enough to control the race. And then uh, also we, we ride like uh, not easy, but like normal. And then uh, the gap is bigger and bigger. So it's good for, uh, for the team and for the mind. So next to the second race, and we see, uh, hope the same. Start someone hit us in the inside, so uh, they push us to the outside. So uh, we lost a lot of places, and then uh, we had to come back from five or six, I think. And uh, it was not easy to pass, but uh, we find some good places to pass. And uh, yeah, then Marvin was uh, much too far for us. And uh, but the feeling was good, and uh, the season is long, so uh, we are happy with the second place. Are you planning to change anything for race two? Yeah, we will change some uh, little things and uh, I hope it will uh, work out for the second heat. The FIM is the governing body of World Motorcycle Sport. They administrate and legislate over every single motorcycle event and there are of course FIM representatives on site in an official capacity, but the men who really do the work are a key group of people. In Sidecar Motocross, we have three. And over the course of the season, we're going to be having a look at those three jobs and what they do. I'm with Dave Edwards, who is race director. Dave, tell us exactly what your role entails. For sure. Um, well, my role starts really the Wednesday before the event. I turn up at the here and it's a blank canvas. I have to check everything. I have to make sure it complies with the rules. Um, I have to do it, work with the club. Um, and it, it, it's a tricky, it's a tricky job, but um, it's, it, we work well with the clubs. We have a good communication, um, and it works well. But we have to get to that final point where the track is ready to go for the racing on the Grand Prix on the Sunday. Well, this particular club in Portugal have done a great job. I think you'll agree, putting getting the Grand Prix ready, first time in 30 years. But what a track! Fantastic track. I mean, when uh, when I first arrived, it was ready to go. They've done so much work in the last three, three or four months getting it ready. Um, there was a part, almost a forest up the side of the track. They've cleared all the trees and they've done a tremendous amount of work. The track was a, is a credit to them. They've done so well. Really pleased. What developments have you seen in sidecar motocross since you've been involved and particularly since WSC got involved? Just the numbers. It's, it's come back. No, uh, sidecar cross has become a sport again um, and they've put it back on the map for sure. It's, we've got television coverage. It's gone around the world and it's just a big community now. It's fantastic. Really good. What about the reception we've had here? Haven't the people been oh, fantastic? They are great. I mean, we have been treated like kings and queens, everybody here. So, really, really pleased. They've made us so welcome, and uh, for sure, I'd love to come back next year. Yeah, this back-to-back, -back, Spain and Portugal, one week apart, is the ideal launch pad for a new season. It is, especially this time of the year. It's um, back in Northern Europe and, and Eastern Europe. We have rain. Here we're in glorious sunshine. The guys can ride and you know there's going to be lack of injury it's, it's great really really good in your job i guess you're treading a bit of a fine line between you're not going to be friends with everybody although you've got to try and be but you have a job to do correct it's it's never easy i have to imply the rules um but yeah we, we do it and we do it well i always say if you treat someone with respect hopefully you get respect back it works both ways the paddock here are fantastic um they have respect for everyone especially the fim staff and i'm really pleased and it's great it's been a fantastic weekend, so in about five weeks' time we're, we'll all meet up again in the Czech Republic. Hopefully, yes. Look forward to it. Well, Dave Edwards, golly, they work hard, those FIM guys. Race two coming up, and it's bound to be another thriller. Can anyone topple Van Lukener from the top spot? Well, you can bet your boots they're all going to try. One minute to go before race two. Here we go then, Van Lukener in the same place, right over on the far left, charge up towards this very, very short straight and into the left, it's Van Lukener again. This time Hermans has gone with him. Hermans has gone with him. 
Justin Kubin got a great start. It's Kubin in second place. Bax is there as well in fourth. Well, a great start again by Van Luka. Boy, can he get that Zabel off the line. Incredible. We've got a mixture, really. Half two, two strokes, half four strokes. 15 two strokes. Three of them are mega. 12 of them are Zabel. And in the four stroke brigade, we've got AMS, Husky, KTM, and Gert van Verven's TM from Italy. 16 four strokes. What a mix. Who would have thought that years ago? Zabel being toppled off the perch, but not here in Alkia now because it's Van Lukener on his two stroke leading from the four stroke of Kuhn Hermans. Justin Kuban, Dion Rietman in the grey and red. You heard me say at the top of the programme how easy he is to pick out his colours. And I just look instantly. I don't even have to go for the number seven. I know who it is. Jason Van Dala, Kostas Beletskas, again in a strong fourth place. The red bottom half, the black and white top half, 7-2-3 on their backs emblazoned. Well, all I could say about these two opening rounds, of Portugal in particular, what a track and what a welcome and what weather five weeks time we'll be back in the czech republic and reports tell us today that it's minus two in prague oh thank you very much etienne Bax, andre chermak 82 there still having a good ride not too bad in race one and they're lying there but not in the position etienne Bax would have liked because you would have thought he'd have been running at the front. All is not well at the moment in the backs camp for whatever reason. Tim Pruma looking strong there and Jano Stegmans in the orange and blue. There, Etienne Bax, Andre Chermak on the back now of Jason Van Dala. Again, seemingly unable to find a way past the Belgian-Lithuanian duo. The old Bardis boys, are they in the mix as well? Well, if they are, then uh, they're dropping out of contention. Still backs having a look. That's the Lille Bardis twins ahead of Tim Pruma, Jano Stegmans. Backs then with the black shirts for company. There they are, 101. Lille Bardis, there's Tim Pruma, Jano Stegmans. So those are all in convoy behind Jason Van Dala and Kostas Paletskas. Bax now as close as he's been as he got away past on the inside. That's the only place he's going to do it. Both right-handed chairs, well, all right-handed chairs, with the exception of Brett Wilkinson, Heinzer, and, of course, all the British crews. Oh, there you say it. Look, that's Bax's pit crew. Lille Bardis breathing down your neck, buddy. And they are. Two seconds behind, Lil Bardis goes, Pruma goes over the big jump. These massive jumps. And there's Brett Wilkinson. Brett Wilkinson behind Pruma. The left-hand chair and the dark blue. 199, easy to pick out. Still Lil Bardis. Get your finger out, Etienne. There's Lil Bardis. There's Pruma. Where's Brett? There's Brett. Brett Wilkinson, Joe Millard. Over the jump and closing, looking fast now. If they can get past Vandala, Bax and Pruma, then, well, are they going to come home here with a strong championship position? Great, great racing. This track has not cut up. The stones have cleared. True to Justin Kubin's track walk prediction. A few laps, he said the stones will be gone. Well, he was right. And it's maintained great, great condition. And we've had two Portuguese national championship races between the, uh, that's Solar that is, not Psychars, between the two GPs. And still the track has held up remarkably well. All credit to the organizers, as Dave Edwards said. Vandala still holding off Etienne Bax, in fact, opening up the gap now. Bax and Chermak, they don't have an answer. Not at the moment, but you can rest assured they will come out fighting. And there's Wilkinson, Wilkinson and Joe Millard past Vandala Beletskas, so the British crew, well, and past Bax as well, just as I said they needed to do it, they've done it. What a fantastic ride. What a great start to the season for Brett Wilkinson. So 
Two birds for the price of one there. In fact, I think he did Pruma as well. Kuhn Hermans and Ben van den Bogart firmly ensconced in second place now behind race leaders Van Lukener and Nicola Musset. Astonishingly good start. I can't remember, and if you can, then write in with a plain brown envelope. I can't remember the last time a GP season started with four back-to-back -back race wins. Great stuff here in Portugal. Van Lukener, there it is. Fantastic stuff. Fist in the air, sits on top of the pile. Couldn't get better than that. The overall classification then, Brett Wilkinson, Joe Millard, third again on the podium overall. They'll stay firmly second. Van Lukener, Hermans, Brett Wilkinson, that's the overall. Kerben, Bax, not too shabby. Van Dala, Sanders, Prunier, Heinzer, top 10. Gert van Vermen and Robert Avena just scraped in the top 10 overall. Less than they would have expected. There are the awards. Brett Wilkinson, third overall, he and Joe Miller. Yeah, amazing, I couldn't believe. Um, you know, we had some trouble yesterday and we were on the outside of the start and we were worried about getting, you know, getting buried in the pack, but we managed to come through and yeah, two really strong rides, completely different to last week. So it was nice to be able to come through the field and yeah, can't believe it, second in the world at the minute is amazing. Kuhn Hermans, he's got the speed, no doubt it. Not the best start, but uh, we came back and uh, today uh, everything was better. Marvin was the fast, but uh, yeah, we improved ourselves and we are very happy with the two times second moto. Well, what can you say about Van Luken and Nicolas Musset? Class act or what? Yeah, for sure, really good. Uh, I'm so happy with this weekend and uh, yeah, thanks a lot to our team, to, uh, to all the hard work, also to our uh, sponsors, supporters at home uh, here. But for sure, it was uh, my son's birthday, so uh, yeah, the most beautiful present I can give him, so uh, I'm really happy. Well, there you have it. Brett Wilkinson, Joe Millard, second in the world. Just 22 points off Van Lukener and Musset. Hermans up to third, back still in fourth. Kerben, Van Dala, Van Verven. Didn't really lose that much, three places in fact. Lille Bardis, Chantelube, all these guys fighting such strength in depth in 2023 i can't wait czech republic next up it's kramelin and uh what's the weather going to be like not like this that's for sure well the portuguese have done us proud it's been the most amazing race here in alkidao i hope we come back from me barry nutley thanks for joining us see you in the czech republic we never stop so go on when you finish and even when we please still believe that we can win this we got what's underneath you're all about that image we never even stop at the top no limits champions and we're the champions and we're the champions and we're the champions so bring it on and is 10 times the world champion. Bax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Lukener certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable.